Hey guys, this game was provided to me by my partner PlayAsia. If you'd like to buy the game, you can use one of the links below. And for an additional $3 off, you can use the code R3D. Now, back to the video. Disclaimer, the following video is for review and critique purposes. It is transformative and educational. After over eight years since its last main entry and several spin-offs, including Persona 4 Arena Ultimax and Persona 4 Dancing All Night, Persona makes its PS3 and PS4 console debut. This review will give you a glimpse at the immense story and gameplay of Persona 5. This game truly is a masterpiece and there's a reason why Persona is now the king of Japanese role-playing games. Thank you guys for watching and I hope you enjoy. Hello guys, this is Red from Red Star Dimension Gaming and this review is for Persona 5, for the PlayStation 4 version. Instead of focusing on death or crime like past Persona games in the series, Persona 5 centers on universal problems that can relate to everyone. Some of the problems that appear within the plot of Persona 5 are sexual harassment, seclusion, bullies, and betrayal. The story is very relatable whether you have experienced any of these issues firsthand or have seen someone else go through something like the characters do in the story. The story is very deep as it contains serious relationships and sets you up with a promising narrative. There are over a year's worth of days in the game and will require around 100 plus hours to complete. I had almost 40 hours into this game and that is not even half the game. So it depends on how you play the game. First, you are introduced to your main character who you name yourself. Your character is being interrogated and must explain what happened in past events. In the past, which is modern day Tokyo, Japan, you play as a transfer student who is now attending Shujing High School Please forgive me if I butcher any of the Japanese names in this, I do not speak Japanese. In this school you learn of corruption and form long lasting relationships. The game will jump back and forth from the future and past events through a progression system. The story is really intense and content heavy so it would be suggested to play the English version of the game once it comes out in February of next year or if you're watching this later 2017 and that is if you do not understand Japanese. With the intent to change the world that they live in our protagonist and his companions travel back and forth through the real and phantom realms. In this phantom world it is a place where players will have to battle and link with personas in order to defeat the evil forces. In the phantom world, players will find a variety of large environments to fight and progress through. Without spoiling too much, these include several different palaces, such as the Castle Palace, Space Station Palace, and Pyramid Castle Palace. There are many more, but I will keep the spoilers to a minimum. The cast in this game is hefty and includes, here we go with the butchering, Ryuji, Anne, Morgana, who is a cute cat and also seems to be like the mascot of this game. You know how Teddy was the mascot of the last Persona series? Well, this is what it seems like for this game. Yusuke, Makoto, Futaba, Haru, and Goro. These are the characters that stuck out and that you use throughout the game. Players will also find Igor and his assistants, Caroline and Justine, in the Velvet Room. In the Velvet Room, you can improve, replicate, and form new personas. It may just seem like a dream world, but the Velvet Room is a very useful tool. And I will get into more about that in the gameplay part of this review. In Persona 5, the relationship and friendship aspect makes you feel closer to each and every character. The high school, streets of Akabahara, Shinjuku, Shibuya, and Tokyo feel so lively with all the side events and people. Players can also get a job which earns them some nice bank. There is also a ton of shopping to be done so players should stay clear and only shop for what they need. If you stay in the city or subway vendors too long you will find yourself wasting hours of gameplay that could have been used on grinding or leveling up or something else that's useful. Navigation can be hard if you cannot read Japanese, but it is easier if you can use online guides 
and can actually get someone else to translate it for you, which is what I did and it helped tremendously. It also helps if you can actually read Japanese because they'll tell you where to go in the corner of the screen. They'll tell you what to do, where to go in the upper corner of the screen. So in the English version, it's going to be very easy to navigate. But for Japanese players, you guys won't have problems at all. The map sizes are not nearly as big as games like Fallout or Grand Theft Auto, but there is certainly a lot to explore. Players can also fast travel to previously ventured areas and dungeons by using R1. The gameplay in Persona 5 also feels fresh and different than other role-playing games. Something that a lot of players will love to hear is that a turn-based battle system has returned. Players must precisely use the circle button to perform a preemptive strike. Otherwise, you will be ambushed and hit hard by many enemies. This game is not a cakewalk, and players can change difficulty at any time from safety mode, which is very easy, to an extremely hard mode called challenge mode. Now, this mode is not available at the very beginning of the game. You must beat the game at least once to unlock challenge mode. You are able to go the whole ways up to hard mode, basically, at the very beginning, which Normal and easy were the two that I was going between, back and forth. You can change at any time. So those are the two that I was going through, and I had a difficult time with that. But hopefully when the English version comes out, I won't have as much trouble. Players will use order persona attacks, which with these attacks, you can change the main character's persona, but cannot change anyone else's. Items, sword attacks, guard, and gun attacks to defeat their enemies. So you can use any of these to destroy the opponent. Speaking of personas, did you know how to obtain them? Well, personas can be obtained through the negotiation system. Once you stun an enemy or all the enemies in your battle, you will trigger a hold up. This will allow you to talk to the opponent and depending on which choices you choose, you will either get an item, make the enemy run away, or obtain them as a new persona. This feature reminds me of Pokemon and made me want to catch them all. So this can turn minutes into hours if you get too addicted to catching all the new personas out there. It's very, very addictive, trust me. Oh, and one thing I want to mention is one of my subscribers said it's like an adult version of Pokemon. That's literally what someone said in my comments. If you guys think that's true, comment below, but that's what one of my subscribers said. Another way of obtaining new personas is fusing them together by sacrificing two or more of your personas. Through the guillotine, off with their heads method can create more powerful personas. Players must also be aware of their level because you must be a certain level to obtain and use certain strong personas. Players can use the hanging method, which also sacrifices personas, but instead gives their experience to another persona. With this method, personas with the same arcana will be given a boost in experience. Also, skills can be carried over with both of these methods. Using the electric chair sacrifice method allows players to give up their personas for items and skills. There is also solitary confinement, which leaves a persona alone for multiple days to train and gain new skills. The amount of time that your persona is left alone for can be reduced depending on your cooperation rank of the arcana of that persona. Now moving away from the executioners of the game, we will talk about gameplay once again. The gameplay is fast but not too fast, it is just perfect and enjoyable. Grinding can be difficult because most of the items are either used for healing or buffing, and you'll run out of these items real fast. If you stay in a dungeon too long, you might die because your HP and SP seem to be the most valuable things in this game. Boss battles can be difficult too, but not too challenging if you have already played other hard RPGs like Bloodborne, that's a hard one to play and you need a grind in certain areas or you just need to be very skillful in Bloodborne. But other RPGs that are difficult, if you're good at them, you should be fine at this game. Grinding is almost a must in this game. Persona 5 does not seem to have too many problems. 
I found the frame rate really great on the PS4, and loading screens were amazing. On the PS3 version, I would just assume that the frame rate would be a little lower, maybe 30 frames per second instead of 60, and the loading screens are probably just longer. The only problem I had was the cover system. When I would move around in cover, sometimes when I press circle to go to the enemy, instead my character would continue to move around to the next corner. So to avoid this, you must hit X to basically get out of cover and then try locking on to the enemy. And the locking system can be a little flamboyant when trying to lock on to a certain enemy when there are more than one enemies in an area. So if you have more than one, sometimes it'll lock on the one that you don't want. So that's my only problem with the gameplay. Just the locking and cover system. What would really be nice is if every game had a cover system like The Last of Us. That system was amazing. But yeah, not every game is going to have a cover system like that. That game is really good with the cover system. Another issue that I had that not everyone will is that gun attacks seem really underpowered. I would like to actually see a game where guns were just as close as swords in terms of damage. In real life, guns can be a very dangerous choice of weapons. But in RPGs, they seem to take the back burner. Therefore, it makes them feel lost and unwanted. So I just like an increase in power to guns in these games. In any game for that matter. Especially in Battlefield 1. Here we go. So EA, real quick, if you ever see this review, fix the horse issue in Battlefield 1's multiplayer. If you don't, I will never ever buy your game. Okay, back to this review. The cooperation system in Persona 5 is amazing. This system has replaced the social link system that was formed in Persona 3 and Persona 4. Persona 5's cooperation system works similarly but also gives out more bonuses for ranking up. When increasing your rank with shops around town, you will receive lower prices, and the amount of stock the stores have will increase too. While in battle, the baton touch will allow a party member that you have formed a high bond with to use a strong bonus attack after your main attack. So you'll get an attack and then you do the baton touch, they'll get an even stronger attack and I believe their attack increases by 50%. More features of Persona 5 include side missions called mementos. These usually don't take too long to tackle and can be more accessible once you have increased your moon cooperation. Dungeons will take much longer and also include many puzzles in alternative routes. Safe rooms have been included but are only used to change floors and saving your game. If you planned on getting healed instantly, you thought wrong. You can only heal through magic and items. This makes it a bit more challenging than some JRPGs that allow you to instantly heal by touching a save point. Outside of dungeons, saving can happen at any time. Finally, the graphics of Persona 5 are dark, gritty, and beautiful. Many people may see it as very similar to the game Catherine, also produced by Atlas. So when I talk about Catherine, I mean the main character, and some of the graphics in the other characters look very similar to the ones that were in Catherine. And a lot of people noticed that, I noticed it too, because I played some of that game. The game does suffer from some faceless people in the subways and school hallways, both men and women, or girls and boys. It is very creepy when you see a bunch of people with just mouths. They don't have eyes, they have nothing on their face but mouths, and that's really creepy. I don't know if it was a budget issue, but no eyes on a bunch of people on subway train at once is horrifying. It reminds me of Assassin's Creed with the no face glitch. <laughs> and if you don't know what I'm talking about, look it up. Just go to Google Images, search Assassin's Creed face glitch, and you'll probably find it. It's really horrifying. Other than that, the graphics are beautiful and make you feel like you are in Japan. Cutscenes in Persona 5 must be mentioned, okay? The game already looks great, but when you enter an anime scene, it is taken to a whole new level of pristineness. They are eye-catching and fun to watch. Overall, Persona 5 is an extensive adventure with plenty of activities, story, and gameplay. The game suffers minor flaws here and there, but is one of the best JRPGs that I have ever played. Hopefully, 
Atlas will allow for more exposure of their game and stop copyright striking anyone that tries to show it off. You also cannot use the share play feature and stream it at all. You cannot take pictures in the game. When you get a trophy, it does not take a picture in the game. It will let you know you're not allowed to take a picture is what it says. So hopefully they will stop doing that and allow people to start showing off their beautiful game. This is a must have and if you're waiting until February, definitely pick it up as that will be a full English release of the same awesome game. I give it a 9.5 out of 10, one of the best and darkest JRPGs, a title that must be owned. Thank you guys for watching and thank you Play Asia for providing me a copy of the game to review. If you'd like to read the full written review which is really long and you don't want to hear me talk, you can go use that link to my blog below or the link to Based Gamer. If you'd like to buy the game and also help support my channel, you can use the Amazon link below for the North American release. If you'd like to buy the game right now and you must have it and also want to help support me, you can use the Play Asia link below and also get $3 off to buy the Japanese or Asian version of the game. So use that link below and the code R3D and you'll get $3 off and you'll help support me. If you'd like to see any gameplay, please go check out my channel. I have some up. I don't know how long that might be up for, but yeah, hopefully it doesn't get taken down. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to thumbs up, comment below, and subscribe. See ya.